I'm not even sure how to start this video. It's about a solar powered glowing orb and the orb is huge. It's got a little hanging thing on top. It's got the button in the bottom and when you put it in a pool, it floats. Yeah, it's too big, isn't it? It's too big for the bench, right? Okay, okay tell you what, we'll size it down a bit by deflation. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, that's it deflated. It's much more manageable now and can theoretically restore to its full glory. So this is an inflatable pool globe and it comes in this box, uh, which is nice and compact for such a large thing. Notable things. Uh, for best results, place in bright sunlight for six to eight hours. Do not overinflate to attempt to remove wrinkles. Wrinkles fade after one day. A wee bit of space here would be useful. In cold water, you may need to reinflate globe. What they mean by that is that the... Uh, Air will expand and contract, so if you overinflate this and you put it out in sunshine, if the air heats up inside, it could actually put it under pressure, it could build up quite a lot of pressure inside. And likewise, when it's really cold, it'll shrivel up, so you might have to inflate it according to the weather. I'm not sure how much tolerance there would be. What you also get is a little pumpin and a set of instructions in German and uh, English, for some odd reason, um, and a remote control. Interestingly to note, uh, when you turn it on, uh, it does the automatic dusk thing, but it always reverts to the slow colour change. So basically speaking, at night time, if you want it to be red every night, you're going to have to go out and boop, press that button, and it goes red. Ah, mit dem Ventil aufpumpen. Nicht so stark aufpumpen. Automatisches Leden im Sonnenlicht. Right, anyway. We're not here for instructions, we're here to open it up. And I could slash the whole thing, but I'm quite tempted to just basically take the knife and just slit around this. Is this going to be cardboard inside? I think this is going to be cardboard. I suppose it doesn't matter, it's sealed, I would expect, in two layers. The layer for the electronics and then the layer into the globe itself. Is it cardboard? Yes, it's cardboard. Or is that, that looks like MDF, a little disc of MDF, that's interesting. To match my bench, that's lovely. Right, what have we got? This switch is kind of also sealed to keep it central. I'm not sure I'm going to deal with that. Oh, oh, and then the electronics. Hold on. Oh, the electronics inside. Oh, bit tricky. Right, tell you what, I think the electronics are inside. Let's get the knife back in again. I shall get this bit off first. There, that bit's off. Oh, there's another little pouch here. I may still be able to get it without actually puncturing the whole thing. Not that I'm really planning on floating this in the pool, largely because I don't have one. Here it is. Is it still intact? Yes, it is. You can actually cut the electronics out. Useful to know. Down goes that random beach ball. Oh, look at this. They put a bit of a... Uh, holographic -y, that sort of patterned tape across it, plastic, to diffuse the light. I have to turn it on now, don't I? And then cover the solar panel. Oh, it does, it creates that sort of sparkly effect. I don't know if you're getting that. Hold on, let me just zoom down and we'll see if you can get the sparkly effect. Cover. See the sparkling there? It's not terribly visible, but you get the drift. It is actually, I thought it was just going to be, oh, it's actually... Let's get this off. Oh, it's kind of ripped. Not to worry. Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's a fairly decent solar panel that does rely on light coming through the outer globe. Then we've got a little 8-pin chip with an infrared receiver, a little inductor here for stepping the voltage up from a 1.5 volt cell. I thought this was going to be lithium. That's actually not a bad thing. Little boost converter, is it? Perhaps uh, creating a supply of 5 volts or 3 volts. We'll find out once I uh, take it to bits. I should actually just take it to bits, shouldn't I? And take pictures and then we can take a closer look at the circuit board. I shall do that. One moment, please. The reverse engineering is done. Let's explore. This appears to be a dedicated 3.3 volt power supply chip here that is designed to work with solar panels and nickel metal hydride cells. And the way they turn it off is very odd, doubly odd, in fact. But it generates a 3.3 volt supply when the unit is turned on. And that 3.3 volt supply is always active when the unit is switched on. But the 
microcontroller over here can also detect output directly from the solar panel, as I shall show you in the circuitry. There's an infrared receiver with its own decoupling capacitors uh, for stability, and it uh, receives the remote control information and converts it into the, well, it just puts it out as a stream of data, which the microcontroller then actually processes. There are three LEDs with a single 100 ohm resistor, and these LEDs are red, green, blue, and warm white. They are all in parallel. Um, uh, one oddity there is that because there are no resistors, it's going straight to the microcontroller, it's relying on its internal resistance of its little output MOSFETs. Um, because of that, to balance the voltages, the red one actually is this extra diode in series to add 0.6 volts to the red LEDs. Uh, that is more or less it. Here is the, if you want to try a bit of reverse engineering yourself. Oh, there was a resistor here. For some reason, instead of soldering the solar panel onto this pad, I think the wires were amply long enough if they had, they soldered it onto the side of a 100 ohm resistor. And as I was trying to get the thing out, because everything was glued in, it pulled the resistor off the board. It's no problem. But this is the top of the circuit board. And this is the bottom. The bottom of the circuit board is notable for having three switch positions, one of which doesn't even have any pads, and they have odd configurations. It's as if this uh, is a generic circuit board format uh, with switches in known positions for a standard range of lights, and then they just add the tracks and stuff to suit. Uh, but having those switch pads on that location was just used as a way of uh, reusing an existing circuit board. Uh, not much to say about this. The big squish here that looks like a fingerprint was actually really hard glue. Very hard to remove that. Uh, I had to use solvent and scrub it, so uh, that's why the pads are a bit bare around there to actually take this picture. Okay, on to the main menu, which is the, the schematic. The schematic uh, starts with the solar panel. I'll draw the little beams of sunshine coming onto that. And the solar panel goes to this chip, and presumably it has a diode inside uh, to charge the, the cell. Well, I know because I tested that when I saw that. Is this bright enough? I don't know if it's bright enough. I think I should actually brighten up a little tad by cheating horribly and nudging it up to that level. And yeah, that'll do. That's better. Then there are two resistors across the solar panel, a 100 ohm resistor and a 100k resistor. The 100k resistor uh, goes to the enable of the microcontroller. I've just thought of something. That's odd. Because the, the actual power rails of this are shunted. And that means that through the diode of that... Hey, that's odd. That is strange. It's almost going to cap that down to 0 0.6 volts. Hmm, I shall investigate that. I'm going to investigate that right now. One moment, please. Yes, it is as I thought. Um, so effectively, when the unit is turned off, it can theoretically charge the nickel metal hydride cell, but this, there'll be a 100 ohm resistor and a diode to ground effectively, uh, which will... Uh, pass a bit of current. Uh, maybe that will regulate the charging when it's actually turned off so it doesn't charge as fast. I wonder if they thought about that. That's quite an odd thing. <clears throat> anyway, the solar panel uh, charges the nickel metal hydride cell via a diode in this chip and it has that resistive divider here that feeds a microcontroller to tell it when there is sunshine that the solar panel is being illuminated. Really bizarrely, the switch that turns it on and off actually breaks a circuit between the inductor that's used to step the voltage up and the chip. So I guess the chip's still pulsing inside uh, to actually try and step the voltage up, but there's nothing on the inductor to actually do that because the switch is open. At the same time, when this switch is open to turn it off, this switch here closes. The two orange boxes show they're linked uh, and it just shunts the positive rail to the zero volt rail to make sure the processor resets. And that's where that sneaky path is effectively going through the diode to the positive and then down through that to the negative. Very strange. The 3.3 volt uh, is there and during daylight, the microcontroller gets that uh, signal from the solar panel that says stay off because, you know, the sun shines out, they won't see the light. But when it gets dark and it uh, reduces below a certain threshold, 
the microcontroller will turn on. When it turns on, it goes into a slow color fade sequence, but you can then use the remote control to actually uh, signal it. I'm not, oh, I know. Oh, I wonder if I, that's something I didn't check. One moment, please. And resume. Okay, so if you turn off the switch, obviously it shorts the reel out and the microcontroller forgets the current program setting. If you bridge it out, oh, oh let me show you this. Let's switch it to, say, for instance, warm white pow little warm white chips not very bright but the current through this will be tiny i think they've just used three to get greater efficiency uh, if i then get the little resistor substitution box which is set to 100 ohms uh, i got this over 30 years ago possibly 40 years ago i got it a very long time ago from tandy i don't think they're still selling it so it's seen it's been through the wars it's uh it'd be nice if they didn't again if I go from here and replace that original resistor there, uh, and it indicates that the sunlight is out, but then the sunlight goes in, it comes back in the previous colour. So it does remember the previous setting when you do that, it, when you're just using the solar enable. That's quite nice. Uh, now, where was I? The infrared sensor which has uh, decoupling capacitors. It's got a 10K pull-up resistor in its output and a 100 ohm resistor, which looks all black here because I initially didn't draw it. And then I drew it in, it looked like a fuse, so I coloured it in. That's just what I did. The microcontroller has a local decoupling capacitor. Uh, note that because there are so many decoupling capacitors and switches, I've actually drawn these little blocks as the zero volt rail here. Zero volt rail or negative is just used as a reference for other voltages like 3.3 volts. In this case, it'll be about 2 volts because it's only having to charge the 1.2 volt cell via the diode. Uh, quite a nice solar panel, I have to say. The solar panel is okay. It's a good, generous size one. It's all covered in schmoo because uh, I've been using solvent to remove the voluminous quantities of sticky tape off the back of it. The 100 ohm resistor for the LEDs, they're all in parallel. And uh, there's the extra diode in the red one because the these ones all have a forward voltage of roughly about 3 volts, well, 2.5 to 3 volts. Uh, this one has a forward voltage of just about 2 volts, so they add that uh, to diode and it takes it up to just over 2.6, uh, which kind of matches the others, and that means they can, uh, they, they're they going to an even current share. The red isn't going to be dominant. Is there anything more to say? It seems so simple now I've reverse engineered it. It took a lot longer uh, to... Uh, a uh, reverse engineer did to explain as you'd expect. The current uh, it draws isn't terribly high. It's a very low power thing. It really is just designed for ambient glow. It's not going to light the universe. Oh, I have to confess now, don't I? It, it was so dim that I thought maybe the battery's low because I haven't charged it. And for the thumbnail, it was coming out grainy. So for the thumbnail, I cheated and I put a flashlight behind it. It surreptitiously angled so it lit it and made it all look bright white and brought the levels up to the point that greenness disappeared. But actually, in a dark room, it's not too bad. It's quite a visual effect. So there we have it. Uh, it's kind of... it's a gone now. I've ripped it. Uh, I've slashed it. I've got the circuit board out it. But that was it, uh, that, that round ball floating thing. It's quite nice that the sunlight goes through from the top. That little wooden disc is presumably a weight. Just a cheap, easy weight and rigidity at the base. But that will also make it, it, the globe float in the water with the solar panel roughly level. And then the actual light travels through the plastic from all directions onto the solar panel to actually charge the battery. So it's not bad. It wasn't super expensive. I think it was about 10 or 15 pounds shipped from China. But it's quite a novel thing. But I don't have a pool. Having said that, there is a little uh, toggle on top you could hang it under a branch or I was going to say, or a good place in your garden. One puff of wind and it's away. But there we go, the solar floating globe.